Now let's look at how estimates of our logistic regression parameters can be used to estimate effect size in our study. For the probability of success of the treatment, we can take the reciprocal of 1 plus e raised to the negative quantity alpha plus beta and we'll substitute in for alpha plus beta our estimates of alpha and beta. Similarly, for the probability of success for the control, we can take the reciprocal of 1 plus e to the negative alpha, or rather, the estimate of alpha. I'm going to load in the learned data that we've been working with in this example. And I'm going to run a simple logistic regression in which we model the response variable outcome as a function of the explanatory variable condition. If I look at the learned data, you'll see that our condition is either 0 for control or, scrolling down, 1 for treatment, and the outcome is either 0 for failure or, again scrolling down, 1 for pass. So in here, I have all 100 observations and I have those four different possibilities. 0 for condition, 0 or 1 for outcome. 1 for condition, 0 or 1 for outcome. Here, I am going to set an object called glm.out as GLM. GLM stands for Generalized Linear Model. Not General Linear Model, because then our response variable would have to be quantitative, but the Generalized Linear Model can take a quantitative or a categorical response variable. And so here I have outcome as the categorical response variable, and I'm modeling that as a function of condition with our two conditions, control and treatment. We have to indicate that we're using the binomial family, which I won't get into why this is called binomial, but here's a word that you recognize. We're using the logit with this binomial family, and I'm going to use the learned data. So let me go ahead and run this equation. And now let's get the coefficients, that is, the estimates of alpha and beta. Alpha is the intercept here, and beta is for the condition 0.98, the intercept 0.40. Now let's estimate the probability of success, first for the control condition. If we go back and look at my slide, we see for the control condition, it's the reciprocal of 1 plus e raised to the negative alpha. Now, I could have put negative alpha plus beta because note that the beta is going to cancel out because we have indicated a 0 for x for the control condition. So here, if you look at it, I have put in the coefficients for alpha and beta, but notice over here that the second coefficient is multiplied by x, which is 0. So that actually cancels out. Down here on line 29, I've indicated a 1 because that's going to be for the treatment condition. So if we calculate for the control condition, we get 0.6. And if we calculate for the treatment condition, 0.8. Now, there's nothing startling about these numbers at this point. Early on in this video series, we estimated 0.6 for the control and 0.8 for the treatment based upon our actual observations that 60% passed in the control condition and 80% passed in the treatment condition. So why am I bothering to show you this in terms of alpha and beta? because I'm showing you that it works in this logistic regression framework, and what this is setting the stage for is adding more variables in which you cannot so easily go calculate that probability of success 
in any of your conditions. So here I'm using an easy example to show you the connection between the regression parameters that we've estimated in the intercept and the condition that you see up here with 0 0.40 and 0.98, the connection between those and the actual probabilities of success in both of those conditions. R actually has a built-in function for calculating these probabilities for every single individual. So if I want it for all 100 individuals to calculate the probabilities, I could use this predict function and you'll see it's a little bit messy because there's a hundred of them, but you'll see everyone in the control group, we predict it 60% pass rate and everyone in the treatment group, we predict it an 80% pass rate. Now let's move from probabilities to odds and estimate the odds. The odds of success in the treatment group, the probability of passing in the treatment condition compared to the probability of failing in the treatment condition can be given in terms of these regression estimates as E raised to the sum of those estimates. For the control, once again, the beta will just cancel out because we have beta times zero and we end up with E to the alpha. So here, I'm using the alpha plus beta times x, but it's zero, so that's the control. And here, alpha plus beta times x, but x this time is one, so this coefficient stays in there. And notice I'm taking the exponent of both of those, e raised to both those powers. So for the control condition, we get the odds of 1.5. Remember, it was three to two. And in the treatment condition, we get four. Remember, the odds were four to one. The odds ratio is E raised to the alpha plus beta times X, where X is zero or one. So if we put in the treatment group as being one, it's E to the alpha plus beta divided by e to again the alpha plus beta times x, but the beta times x is beta times zero, so that disappears and we're left with e to the alpha. And if we simplify all this mathematically, this just turns out to be e to the beta. So if I simply take e and raise it to beta, my regression coefficient beta, that will give me the odds ratio. So look what I've done here. That's exactly what I've done, is taken just that second coefficient and take e to that power, and what do we get? 2.67, you've seen that before. That's four divided by 1.5. That's the odds ratio. The odds of passing in the control condition are three to two or 1.5. The odds of passing in the treatment condition are four to one or four, and the odds for the treatment condition are 2.67 times higher than they are for the control. So if we were to report these results, we would say that if you're in the treatment condition, your odds are 2.67 times higher than if you're in the control condition. Notice something interesting here, another connection to regular regression. If beta equals zero, the odds of success for the treatment are the same as for the control. So the treatment's not effective. That's exactly what we do in regular regression with quantitative variables. If beta is zero, the explanatory variable's not predicting anything. How does this work? Well, if beta is zero, look what we have e raised to the zero, and e raised to the zero is one. So the odds ratio is one. Remember in a previous video, I said that when you have odds and looking at odds ratio, one becomes your baseline of no effectiveness because it means that the odds in the treatment are the same as the odds in the control 
and the odds ratio is just one. Now we'd like to be able to infer outside of this study to the population. Let's look at the conditions for valid inference. As always, we have to have independence of our units. We do not take natural clusters of individuals to use them in our study. The prediction is going to be better with larger sample sizes. That also is something we're very used to. A rule of thumb that we can use is one predictor for every 10 subjects in the smallest cell of the response variable. If I look at the table of data we've been working with, the response variable here is outcome category. There are 30 in the fail condition. There are 70 in the pass condition. So the smallest cell of the response variable is 30, meaning that I don't want more than three explanatory variables if I'm going to stick to the rule of thumb of no more than one variable or predictor for each 10 individuals in the smallest cell. Well, in our example, we only have one predictor, so we're in good shape. Note that we're dealing with categorical variables here. And so, there is no assumption of normality. You're not going to have normality with dichotomous data like we have here. How do we test hypotheses? Well, the parameter of interest here is beta. Remember, beta is what determines whether or not we have an actual effect. And remember that when beta was zero, the odds ratio was one. So the null hypothesis is very known to us. Beta equals zero, just like in regular regression. With a large enough sample, the coefficients of the logistic regression equation will follow a normal distribution. So even though we will never have a normal distribution with our dichotomous data, those coefficients, those alphas and betas, can follow a normal distribution with a large enough sample, and thus we can use that for inferences. Coefficients can be individually tested in simple logistic regression, which is what we've been focusing on here, there's only one coefficient of interest, and that's beta. I can look at summary of my glm.out. Remember that glm.out was what I called my object for my entire model way back up here. So I can use the summary command in R, and I'm going to use it right now. And that will provide me some statistics for inference. The one I'm going to focus on right now is the p-value for the condition, which is 0.03. Our estimate was 0.98 for beta. The question is, is that enough information to say that beta is not zero based upon the variability of 0.98, which we see here in the standard error for condition? And the answer is yes. We can, in fact, infer to a larger population outside of this study that we expect this treatment to improve the passing rate of students. Note that this is based upon a Z value, something we have not seen for a while. That is, it's based on the standard normal distribution as our reference distribution for calculating the p-value. So here we have tested whether beta equals zero. We rejected that null hypothesis. The conclusion that we've reached is that receiving the treatment will increase the pass rate. The odds ratio is greater than one even outside our study.